This is Matt Houghton for Sound on Sound. Um, I'm just helping you guys find your way around Revoice Pro 3.2. Um, here we have a project which is uh, a lead vocal, some double tracks and backing vocals, and some time-aligned outputs that I created using an APT process. Um, I've covered that in an earlier video, so check the YouTube playlist if you want to see more about that. Um, the reason I've got all this showing is that I want to um, I want to do pitch edits and time edits on the guide vocal and show you how that that will update the outputs from your processes. Um, now, as you see, I've got a process selected, and I'm actually unable to get into the pitch editing mode from there. What I need to do is um, what's called create a warp region. If I right click here, you can see the options not available. I need to actually have the audio selected on the guide part. Um, to do that, um, you can either right click and do edit audio, although that's going to require a couple more steps, or just click outside the process area on the guide part and you can see that the audio is now selected and highlighted green. I'm going to shift click here just to select the, the second part that was dragged across. And with that done, I've got the outputs and the dubs muted, and I'm just going to hide them using the groups I created in a in a template. And I'll stretch the part down, and you can see the notes start to appear in bars. That helps to act as a visual guide. Um, you can also just click that little hamburger symbol to maximise the uh, the part on the screen. With the part selected, I can go to right click, make warp region, and you can see. If I click, click on each of these clips, that there are a whole load of uh, pitch traces that will be familiar to anyone who's used Melodyne or um, Autotune or that kind of thing. Um, I want to zoom out a little bit so you can see it better. So I've used T. And if I click on this pitch trace here, you can hear that beautiful tone. Um, <laughs> it's not really that beautiful, is it? But it does cut through pretty much any music, and it enables you to tune the parts by ear instead of just aligning it by sight, which is invaluable. So if I click this and drag it up, you can hear what happens. Um, some people might find that a little bit grating, I suppose, and if you want to change that, just go to Preferences and enable tuning preview just undo that personally i like it now um one thing to say before we dive into this um you see these white lines over on the right of the screen here by the scroll bar they show you the uh the pitch range of a part so you can if you have confronted with an empty screen like this you can just slide down your scroll bar onto the white lines and you'll find something um and if you click at the top of the scroll bar, this slider uh, zooms in and out vertically. And you can see the scroll bar there just covers the entire note range now. So anywhere I scroll left and right, I'll find my notes. Um, but if you ever get lost, that's really well worth knowing. Okay, so we've zoomed in. I've got a note here, I've selected it. You can hear that that pitch is sounding and that will change as I drag up or down. Um, so I'm just going to turn it off for the purposes of this demonstration. I actually like it on um, when I'm working. It, it just cuts through so well. Um, but it does get irritating on a video like this. So now I can move the, the part without, um, without troubling your ears. So by default, we have the selector tool enabled. And this is context sensitive. It changes according to where you place it. On the top and bottom edges, you get this uh, line with a, an inward pointing arrow. That enables you to compress the pitch. And you can get the same thing going over to the sides to do the compress it in time. Um, if you go slightly to the outside um, on the edge, you can do a warp, which stretches and compresses both the selected note and the adjacent one. Um, and if you go to a corner, you can work in both um, axes at once. Now, obviously, being able to work in two axes at once um, can be problematic because it's easy to make mistakes. So there are, in the top right-hand corner here, these locks which turn red when engaged. A horizontal lock stops you being able to perform any uh, compression stretching of time or moving it um, left or right if you've got a shorter piece. Um, and the pitch, uh, sorry, the vertical lock prevents you um, changing the pitch as you're performing uh, time stretches and so on. So they're really useful. Um, 
that's almost it for the selector tool. Um, however, if you go to the edge and you have this uh, compression um, icon, hit Alt, then click, and you can see that you can ramp up or down in time. Now that's a really useful, um, <clears throat> a really useful tool. But it's more useful when you've selected a bunch of notes like this, and you get to apply exactly the same function, but to the group of notes, not just to the single one. Okay, so that was the selector tool. Now if you right click, as I say, there is a, a number of other tools, and the cutter tool does what it says on the tin. You can go and split the audio where you want to create two different note blocks um, usefully. You can scroll the pitch up and down so that you can see the waveform a little bit better. It enables you to make slightly more precise edits. There you go. Um, and then you can manipulate that block using the select tool again, just like we did before. Um, I was going to undo that, but let me show you the join tool, actually. You just, it's uh, a tape, I think, not a toilet roll. <laughs> um, if you hold it in between the two notes, you hit join, and it will join it. Um, if I were to zoom out, I, uh, or scroll along, at least, you can see the next note. I should be able to join two that have been detected on their own. So it's not just things you've cut yourself, in other words. Let's undo those two. Um, so I can see a little bit better there. Right, so we're back to where we were. Um, one thing that's worth showing you is the smooth join tool. So let's just split here. I'll go back to the select tool. I'm going to make a, a change. Now you can see, and you probably hear actually, if I, um, let me just delete this playback range so that I can play from the cursor. You should be able to hear a, a glitch as it uh, as it transitions from one note to the other. And oh. Sorry, I've got some other things playing. Let me just switch those off so you can hear just the guide on its own. And oh. So not only has it changed pitch, but there's a kind of an audible step there, kind of a, an obvious autotune effect, if you like. Um, and the way you deal with this is just going to the smooth join tool, M for the shortcut. You should select the two of them together, and you can see that trace has just changed. Now let's hear what's happened there. And uh... See, it's, uh, it's not the most beautiful uh, pitch change in the world. It's not a natural one. I just did the, uh, the edits kind of uh, indiscriminately. But you can hear that it's smoothed over the join. Let's undo those. Okay, so um, the pencil tool is an interesting one. If you zoom in, you can see what we're doing a little bit better. And as you might expect, it enables you just to um, change the pitch by free drawing the thing in. So if you have some awkward little artifacts in there, uh, natural performance artifacts, I mean, you are able to go in very carefully and just smooth things out. Again, I'll undo those. Um, we've run through those. So the correct pitch tool I'll show you in a moment, the warp point tool. Is pretty much what you'd expect. It's just like you'd find in uh, Pro Tools, Cubase, and whatever. Let's bring that up. And it's for time stretching. So if I press Shift and click, I'm able to put a warp point in. I like to do four myself so that I can manipulate one section and uh, not affect the, the rest of the note too much. Um, if you press Shift, you can delete them as well. So it's shift to create and shift to delete. It's really intuitive, really easy. Um, okay, that's all of the main manual tools for manipulating. You'll soon get used to these shortcuts. Um, there is one more tool to show you, and for that I really need to zoom out. So I'll, uh, I'll do that now. Here we go, you can see a lot more of it there. And I'll go back into my select tool, select a note, Apple A here, and that gives me, um, uh, it selects all of the notes. If I then press K, that brings up the correct pitch tool, and it's just a pitch quantize. You can see the, the blobs moving. Um, you just do it as much as you want, say 63% here. Let's play it and see how it sounds. And all this time wasted on you. Let's undo that so you can hear the original. And all this time wasted on you. So it's 
one of the cleanest sounding um, processes that I know, to be honest. Um, that gives you the basics. I think we'll wrap it up there and um, we'll come on to some uh, more in-depth functions in another video.